Hey everyone, my name is Zach from My Shire Farm and thank you for watching the video. Today we're going to try to help you with your quail journey and becoming more self-sufficient. By talking about when incubators lie, we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot your hatch rate and your incubators. In specific, we're actually going to talk about temperature. I'm going to do separate videos on humidity and different options, uh, but the video just became too long. Uh, so today we're just going to talk about the temperature issues that could happen in your incubator. So let's get started. I've got some examples for you. Um, and I had a customer a while back that contacted me and said that they just candled on day 10 and there were zero development. Okay, so I knew for sure, 100% that it was a temperature issue. They disagreed with me. I convinced them to get a separate thermometer and hygrometer. Turns out it was a temperature issue. So we're gonna get into that in just a second, but there are some basics that I want you to know. Number one, I am a big believer in my experience and with all the time that I've had in this, that all, all incubators lie at some point in time. It might not be the first time you open it up and get it out of the box, but it eventually, it, it, it's not going to be reading correctly. Um, so I'm a big believer that because of that, you should always have a separate thermometer slash hygrometer inside the incubator to check and balance, to double check uh, what the incubator is doing and make sure it's, it's syncing up together. It's just a really good best practice. They're not that expensive as far as the extra thermometer hygrometer. Uh, I recommend the Govi. It's on our Amazon store. Uh, I think it's like 10 bucks and it's very reliable. I like it a lot. We bought like 10 different thermometers to check out. I didn't like any of them except for the Govi, so that's why I recommend that one. So make sure that you're double checking because all incubators lie. That's right, that's right. So. I knew that it was a temp issue. The reason I knew that is because there was zero development. So the temperature needs to be at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Now with that being said, there is some wiggle room there. So don't overstress, okay? So you can go from 99 degrees to 100 degrees and you're in the safe zone. It's not a big deal at all. The yellow zone, the uh, you're, it's, you're right on the, the cusp of having an issue, is between 98.5 to 99 or 100 to 100.5. You're still okay, but now you're, you're pushing the limits. So there's still some wiggle room there, which is nice. Unfortunately, when they checked their incubator, which was a very nice cabinet incubator that was pretty expensive, it turns out that their incubator was actually running at 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. That is not high enough of a temperature for them to start to develop. So temperature is very, very important through the entire incubation process. So the reason I knew that there was a temperature issue is because there was no development at all, which means I knew that the temperature was way too low. Now, um, there can be other issues as well. So let's talk about um, if you candle later on and you see a lot of blood rings or you see a lot of uh, start development and stop. That's usually a temperature issue, but it's not because it's too high or too low. It's because it's both. It's because there's a fluctuation. Um, usually it has to do with the fan. Uh, the fan circulating stopped working or it's not sealed properly all the way. And so the heat element keeps turning on and off. So it's getting really hot, losing all the heat and then turning on again. And so it's fluctuating. So if you see a lot of blood rings or a lot of start and stops, it would be due to a fluctuation issue. Now, the way to fix that would be to help insulate the incubator uh, with a blanket, a towel, uh, a quilt of some sort, and you put it around there, it's going to help insulate it and keep it at the right temperature consistently because consistency in temperature is key for incubation. Now, going back to the no development, which means it's a, a low temperature, again, the way to fix that is to have a separate thermometer slash hygrometer in there at all times, and you're double checking every day um, because we've done some... Uh, 
review of some incubators that we've purchased and done honest reviews on and every single one of them have been off just a little. Now, one was off a full degree, which again puts me in that, ugh, I'm almost losing the hatch zone. And some of them were only off by a half a degree, which means I was in the safe zone. But I've not had one incubator that I've done a review on yet that I've not had to manipulate in some fashion. So to fix the first option or the first issue would be to have a checks and balances. Um, to have the fluctuation issue, insulate the incubator. You know, you could use extra styrofoam, blanket, towel, anything like that will help dramatically. Now let's talk about if they're hatching late. Now the biggest issue with them hatching late is they're going to start having deformities such as curled toes or such as wry neck. Okay. So when that happens, it's usually due again, not always, but usually due to a low temperature. You need to increase the temperature so that they're hatching on time. Typically, you'll start seeing some deformities after day 19 or 20 if you haven't fixed the issue. So in an ideal situation, they, you put them into lockdown on day 15. Day 16, you start seeing pips. Maybe even late on day 16, they're starting to hatch out. Day 17, you have a huge hatch. Day 18, you're getting a couple extra to hatch. And day 19, you have some few stragglers and then it's over. Now, if it's not in that timeline, that means we need to, to change the issues uh, pretty quickly, okay? Um, so we talked about having them hatch too late, but what happens if they hatch too early? So like I said, we want them to start hatching on day 16, 17, 18, and stragglers on 19. Now, what if they start hatching on day 14 or day 15? I've had some customers have that happen to. Well, it's because your temperature is way too high. Now, the problem with that is one, you're usually not ready because they might still be in the turners, right? Or number two, um, they usually have an issue, not always, but usually have an issue of failure to thrive. So because they hatched out so early, days in advance, um, usually when you put them in the brooder, they're very weak, they don't grow well, they're very small, um, and usually there's a, a much higher uh, death fatality. Um, so keep an eye on that. So temperature is very, very important during the incubation process. If you understand what you're looking for, you can then diagnose the issue and fix the problem. So number one, it's always a best practice. I will always say this to check your incubator with a separate thermometer and hygrometer. If those two are not reading correctly, I always recommend that you trust the inside incubate or the inside thermometer hygrometer that you purchase separately. Now with that, here's a little tip. Make sure you do your own reviews. I highly recommend the Govi. You can find that on Amazon and eBay. I think they might even, I've seen it before at Tractor Supply, but uh, it's hit or miss there. Now, I really like it. That's what I use. I would recommend it. But there are some customers that do not like the Govi, and that is okay. What you want to do is look at the reviews and find one that you feel is very trustworthy. Then if there's ever an issue between what the incubator reads and what the inside of the incubator thermometer is saying, you always trust the thermometer that you've put inside. Now, um, during the incubation process, there's also a humidity uh, level that you need to meet. It's not as important as the temperature until we hit lockdown, which is going to be in our next video. We're going to talk about possible humidity issues, what to look for, and how to diagnose it. But with um, little to no development, it's always a temp issue and it's always too low. With um, hatching late, that means it's too high, or I'm sorry, it's too low, and it took too long for them to get out of the eggs. The issue with that is gonna be a lot of deformities. If they hatch too early, that means the temperature is way too high, and they're not fully developed, so they're gonna struggle in their growth period. And most importantly, which is the biggest issue I see out there, and that is 
if you see a lot of blood rings or a lot developed and were uh, starting and then stopped and you see a lot of blood rings, then that is a fluctuation issue. Again, that usually comes down to the fan or uh, not being well insulated. So you wanna make sure that it's consistent. Again, you wanna make sure it's between 99 and 100 degrees. That is the safe zone. You can go a half a degree on each way to be in the okay zone. But once you pass those, it's affecting the hatch quite a bit. Um, now we're going to talk about in the next video, humidity, possible issues. And then we're gonna do another video on separate issues that, that you need to look at. It could be a Turner issue. It could be this, it could be that. Uh, and we're gonna try to break those down. But if you understand the process, then you might be able to understand how to diagnose and fix the issue quickly to help save the hatch. If you have any questions, obviously comment below. I try to respond to those every day. If not, I will respond shortly uh, and I'll try to help you on your journey. And remember, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I go live right here on our YouTube channel, My Shire Farm, for a live question and answer. So you ask the questions and we will be happy to try to help you on your journey, answer those questions, and have you become more successful on your self-sufficient journey. So thank you very, very much for watching. I know I gave you a lot of information in a short amount of time. I know I was talking quickly, but I know that we're all very busy, so I just wanted to get that out there. So thank you very much for watching. And next video, we're going to talk about humidity issues. When? That's right, when incubators lie. Thanks and have a great day, everybody.